You may be seated. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Tonight, the last of our candles is lit. The four candles have been removed, and now just the Christ candle stands, reminding us that Christmas is here. For many of you, that's going to mean the Christmas festivities begin. There will be parties to go to, presents to unwrap, and family to enjoy. One of the traditions in the Schultz household is every year you go to Grandma's for Christmas. You've heard me say it before, but it's over the river and through the woods to Grandma's house we go, and that's where we'll be going. It might not always be on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, but sometime we'll find a chance to have the Schultz party at Grandma's. The traditions normally begin at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The family gathers together and we have snacks. Now, they're not really normal snacks. You might call them heavy appetizers, but truthfully, it's dinner. It's not just cheese and crackers, but it's six kinds of cheeses and five different kinds of crackers. It's the sausages. It's the pepperonis. It's the little weenies. It's the meatballs. It's the bacon-wrapped everything, and it is the uh, stuffed mushrooms. It's the shrimp cocktail and the shrimp scampi. The list can go on and on and on. But that's what we have for snacks at Grandma's. Then at about 3 o'clock, the traditions continue with then. At 3 o'clock, when everybody's stuffed on snacks, we have the meal. <laughs> that's how it typically works. That's why the Schultzes are in such great shape. <laughs> Got a lot of laughs first service, too. Maybe this would be a good New Year's resolution for me. The traditions at Grandma's are always fun. Uh, they continue then. As cousins, you always play games at Grandma's house. There's the card games, euchre, spoons, or kemps. Growing up, we played board games also. It might have been Mousetrap, one of our favorites. Maybe it was Sorry or Monopoly, but he always played some kind of game. Some years, it was actually nice like it is this year, and you could go outside and play football. Football was always kind of fun with the cousins and the uncles until football got banned at Grandma Schultz's house. You see, one year, my uncle, Uncle Joel, he thought he was going to prove to his nephews who the alpha male still was. He was the top dog, he thought, and he was going to teach his little high school football playing nephews who was in charge. He comes barreling in for the touchdown, and my brother Jacob hits him high, and I hit him low, and a trip to the emergency room and a few stitches later, and football was banned from Grandma's house. <laughs> Grandma's house is always a really fun time. Another wonderful tradition that the Schultzes have is you always get to watch that Christmas movie. Have you got to watch your favorite Christmas movie yet this year? For me, my favorite is Christmas Vacation. I've probably actually seen it four or five times already this year, and will probably watch it at Grandma's again. I just love that part when Clark puts all of the lights on the house. He asks the kids to do a drum roll, and then nothing happens. Just kind of wonderful. But perhaps you have a different favorite Christmas movie. I know over at our day school, the favorite is probably Elf. That's probably everybody's favorite over there. I've heard others at the first service tell me, no, Pastor, Home Alone's the really good one. And I even had some people tell me that really Die Hard is the best Christmas movie. <laughs> but whatever the Christmas movie is, we'll pick one, vote on one as the cousins, and get to watch one at Grandma's. I'm hoping this year, as one of the older cousins, I can trump some of the other votes and get to watch the one I want to watch. Perhaps then the biggest tradition of grandma's is probably a tradition your family has too. It's the one everybody has at Christmas. It's opening presents. That's always fun. I remember as a kid, you wanted a mound of presents. That would just be wonderful. You got presents with mom and dad. You got presents at grandma and grandpa's. Presents with the aunts and uncles. It was glorious. I found as I've gotten older, it's also fun to give the presents too. It's fun to give those white elephant gifts, those kind of humorous gifts. And it's fun to give the sentimental gifts. This year, uh, for our gift exchange, I drew my brother John. Uh, my brother John has been growing a beard for five months, and it's about as long as mine. <laughs> so uh, can you guess what I'm getting him for Christmas? Uh, a beard comb. So uh, don't spoil my surprise, but uh, it'll be a good Christmas indeed. 
I find it fun to hear what families do as they open presents. When does your family open presents? Uh, growing up, we always opened ours on Christmas Eve. We went to church at 7, we opened gifts, and then we went back to church at 11. A, a great model for you tonight, perhaps. I heard other people at the first service tell me they already opened their presents. And some kids had to wait all the way till Christmas Day. When I was growing up, I was born in Danville, Illinois. And uh, at the pastor of my church was a guy by the name of Pastor Gench. And do you know what his tradition was for opening presents? He made his family wait till Christmas Day to open gifts. Uh, I thought that was pretty great. My dad is also pastor, and we got our presents Christmas Eve, but the other pastor kids had to wait till Christmas Day. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty wonderful. I wasn't always on the nice list as a little child. Uh, but Pastor Gensch not only made his kids wait till Christmas Day to open gifts, but get this, they had to wait till after church to open gifts. Now think about that. That's not so bad, okay? You can come to church tomorrow and still be home by about 10, 20 open gifts. That's not so bad. But he made his kids not just wait till Christmas Day, not just after church, but he made them wait till after lunch. Not just after lunch, he made them wait until he took a Christmas Day nap. Can you imagine that, boys and girls out there, waiting till about 3 o'clock in the afternoon to open Christmas presents? Uh, sounds like the Grinch to me, doesn't it? But you know, as I've reflected back on Pastor Gench and those traditions that he had, what a wonderful tradition, what a wonderful example he set for his kids. That here at this Christmas time, what's most important, it, it's not the stuff, it's not the presents, it's not the gifts, what's most important is being here in God's house. It's hearing about a God who loves us and sends his son to be our savior from sin. The angel proclaims, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy. That's for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord. This is the good news of great joy that fills our hearts this Christmas season. It's not the stuff. It's not the traditions, it's not buying presents or giving presents. It's not the snacks or the meal or the car games or the board games or the football games. It's not picking the Christmas movie and it's not even opening the mound of presents. What Christmas is all about, the good news of great joy that fills our hearts, it's about a God who loves us. It's about a God who looked down and saw his people trapped in a world of sin with no hope to redeem themselves by themselves. And so this God who loves us sent a savior. He sent a baby to be born in Bethlehem. This is no ordinary baby. We get to see those every day. There's something special about this baby. This baby was the very son of God. This baby was Jesus. And this baby is going to grow and he's going to go to a cross. Where he's going to give us the greatest gift this Christmas season forgiveness of our sins, and life with our Father home in heaven. This is really good news for God's people. As we look at our lives this past year and we try to determine have we been on the nice list or the naughty list, well, we know truthfully we've all been on the naughty list. Not one of us have made it to the nice list. And yet we have a God who loves us. And we have a God who sent a Savior to erase the naughty list that we might be with him forever. The angel did not proclaim, I bring you good news of great joy of a mound of presents. No, the angel proclaimed, I bring you good news of great joy that has saviors been born. It would be my wish for you that this year, you also get the stuff. I hope you get as much family time as you want this year. It would be my wish that you get to do all the traditions you get the snacks, you get the meal, you get the card games, the board games, the football games, you get the Christmas movies, and you even get a whole mound of presents. That'd be my wish for you this year, knowing that all of those things are really a good gift from our God who loves us. But it would also be my wish that as you open the mound of presents, that the good news of great joy that fills your hearts this Christmas season is not the new Nerf gun or the new iPhone, or the new computer. But the good news of great joy that fills your hearts is a God who loves you, a Savior in Jesus, 
and that greatest gift, forgiveness of our sins. May God richly bless you this Christmas season as you continue to rejoice tonight and every day in a God who loves you and a Savior who saves you. Amen.